Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. I'm again here in the Kia Niro EV 2023 and today it's a bit more of a very detailed look at the car. So for the people that are really interested in the car, we'll go through a lot of things, how they work and what happened to me, what I recognized. Number one, Let's just dive in. Is the starting process, as I said in the other video, if you don't have your seatbelt on when you press the start, but a start stop button, then you get five beeps. But if you just press it and uh, uh, turn it on, it's just one little welcome sound. I noticed. I think that the key here, the battery of the key, is getting empty because three times I couldn't start the car. Uh, but it didn't give me the message that I thought it would. Then I thought it's because Walter's car uh, key is also in my pocket and they're both sending out signals. But now I already got the message that it doesn't recognize the key and that I have to press with the key on the start stop button. Then it's on and I can drive. And this is a clear indication that the battery here is empty or there's a fault that it doesn't recognize the key, but I think more it's the a battery. Uh, we go through the buttons, everything, so you can see uh, uh, better uh, memory seats, but just for the driver, uh, two positions, you just press it long and it's done. Uh, let's go through those keys. Um, when you turn the car uh, off, so when you go into the park, you can manually put the car uh, parking brake on, but you can also, when you're in drive, just press the start stop button and it goes into park and uh, applies the parking brake and turns off the car in one thing. So that's very nice. The seat heaters, you can turn them on very nicely here with a button and they work really, really well. They're really strong, get really hot. You have to turn them off uh, lower pretty fast. Uh, what I noticed every time you turn off the car and on, seat heater and steering wheel heater is off. In the app, you can turn on that steering wheel heater is on when you preheat the car, but not the seat heater. You can do defrosting of the front uh, 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 windshield and the rear windshield. The steering wheel heating works really well. What I have noticed that there are a few areas where it doesn't heat strongly. So overall it gets really hot and you have to turn it off very fast. But here in the back and especially here down here, it doesn't get warm. Um, and there's a little piece of metal here that stays cold very, very long. But where you hold it usually here, it gets really warm and really fast. The phone wireless charger, you can turn it on and off in the instrument, in the, in the infotainment system, works okay. If you want to use Android Auto, a Apple CarPlay, only via USB cable and only in the middle um, plug here, so USB-A, the USB-C is just for charging and then we have a 12 volt outlet, 180 watt and we have two USB-C's here in the doors that also uh, are USB-C uh, USB and only for charging. If you want to use the remote driving, you have to get into the car, turn it on and then press long the park uh, symbol. Then park assist conditions not met because I'm on a slope, but usually it tells you that you can use it now. Then you get out of the car and on the key, you just press your forward and backwards uh, button for a while. So you press it, then you can hear it do something, then the parking brake disengages and then it drives. It takes a bit and it does it very slowly, very cautious, and it's good that way. And when you get into the car, you just press the parking sensor button and it's out of it. The climate, um, we already talked about that the climate, you switch here between map, navigation, radio, media, setup here. And then when you press it, then this button is volume and power of the infotainment system. So you can turn it off or it comes to this here or the, the music off. And by the way, when you press this or the mute button here for Bluetooth or Android Auto, it pauses, it doesn't pause it, it just mutes it. That's a bit annoying. In other cars, this button does pause. So it just keeps on playing, but you can't hear it. And climate, like I said, if you preheat the car, it goes into auto climate. Um, and if you don't like that, like me, every time when you get into the car, you have to do the settings anew. And if you want this rear seat heating, you have to go into system. You have to go into climate and then rear warmer and then here you can turn them on. They have two steps. 
Yeah, drive mode is also clear. We have eco, normal, sport. And if you want snow where it doesn't give a lot of torque, I tested it, it's, it's really good. You just press it long. And then you're in snow mode and then with one press you're back out of it. Um, cruise control. I have no, uh, by the way, oh, let's go um, wiping system. The wipers are amazing. They're really good. They wipe very fast and they, uh, uh, they wipe the whole space. And the best thing is when you spray the, wi the window because it use, usually when you do the, the spraying of, of the windshield, you press it and it takes a bit and then it sprays something in other cars and then it wipes 10 times or whatever. Here, you press it, it sprays immediately and it wipes three times. Even two times. It's amazing. I hate when it's wiping too much. Then it's already dry and still wiping and then it makes it dirty again. So that is really awesome. Regen adjustment with the pedal shifters here. Um, when you press it, uh, it just goes up and down. And when you go into eye pedal, it always beeps. When you go out, it beeps again. And the annoying part of this is when you use cruise control, cruise control turns the uh, regen off because it does auto regen then. So you get the beep. And when you can, when you turn cruise control off because there is, I don't know, a lot of traffic and you don't want it to get too close, it beeps again because it turns eye pedal on again. So it's beeping, beeping, beeping. This favorite button you can put to whatever you want. I have it on EV. Mode button as well can be different things. Uh, I think here it's on media. When it comes to cruise control, you turn it on here. It's easy here. The distance, the biggest distance, so the five uh, uh, steps that it can go, or four steps, four steps, um, is not as far as I would like to. I would want one step further, but that's how they chose. Um, Self steering, if you turn that on, um, it doesn't on the on the country road it doesn't turn on automatically with cruise control and if you turn it on and then you turn cruise control off self steering stays on on the highway when you turn cruise control on it's on automatically with cruise control and you can turn it on and off how you want to the adjustment of the speed when you press up uh, it t when you want 10 kilometers more, uh, kilometers an hour more, you press it and it takes a bit and then it does 10, 20, 30. So it takes, so, so, so adjustment from 70 to 100, for example, it takes a bit and you have to know when to stop. It's a bit annoying. They could have done the reaction time a bit better. So this is one and this is long, but it, you really have to press a bit longer. We have your different controls here where you can see your distance uh, setting for your cruise control and everything here. You have your drive information, the three trips. Do you see animation, what the battery does, if you're discharging or are charging, your digital speedometer. Then you have you can have your navigation in here. Usually you have your compass and you have navigation. You have either when the next time you have to do something, so in 10 kilometers turn right, or it just shows it's 30 kilometers till you're there. Um, and then we have a little, your tire pressure display is only when you're driving. And the uh, uh, self-steering button, if you press that long, turns off your lane assist. It then goes into orange because the lane assist pulls you around. Uh, the state of charge, you only have this, these bars here. You cannot have it as a number in your instrument cluster. Your region level is here on the right. Every time when you get into the car and you didn't use it for for a while, you get only you get always in this uh, normal screen here, and you get a confirm message in the beginning that you have the safety of the driving and everything. And sometimes this con the, the confirm button that you have to press is there immediately. Sometimes it takes 10 seconds, and uh, you always have to go uh, swipe left so you can see your normal functions and. EV, for example, you can then see your state of charge, but I have it on the favorite button as well. If you want to see your instant consumption before, there was a few clicks and it's still a few clicks. You need EV, then those dots here, energy information, those dots again, energy consumption, and then it tells you what your climate, driving, everything is using uh, an instant consumption in kilowatt, which is an awesome window. It's just sad that it's so hidden. 
In vehicle settings, you can have uh, different settings for your head-up display and you have also your cluster theme where you can have your th uh, different clusters and you can link it to the drive mode. I like the theme C, but my problem is that you have an analog speedometer and I love a digital speedometer and so I have to put it in the middle, but if I want to see digital speedometer and my drive in view, I have to be in dynamic, dynamic mode. In the other themes, when you have your round things, uh, round displays here, you can see the range is not as big uh, and you can see the discharge and how much power you're using very well. Yeah, the app has a lot of functions, a lot of things you can see. Uh, in the beginning when I got it, I uh, got the car, uh, for a few days I had problems connecting to the car. It always said that uh, connection problem and I had to redo it a few times. <laughs> but after a few days it's just working. What you have to know is that every time you want to see something, it doesn't automatically refresh. So if you want to see your real... Uh, um, status of what you have so are you charging what's your state of charge because here in the in the front it just shows your range you have to go on refresh and then to see that you have to uh, put in a pin and then this pin is just uh, uh, available so your information for 10 minutes so it receives all the data then you can also do your scheduled charging and scheduled climate control and I said it in the other videos scheduled climate does not work when the car is not plugged in and if you preheat the car with the app it only does it for 15 minutes it gives you a message hey I started climate and it is done really well fast so I would say after 10 seconds or so and then after 10 minutes it gives you a message I'm only preheating for another five minutes why doesn't it not update now it takes a long time yeah. And when you send something and then you want to do something else, it tells you I'm not done with the other thing, you have to wait. And for the climate settings, you can also do defrost windscreen, side mirrors, rear window heating and steering wheel heater, but not uh, seat heating. And of course your temperature and then it does all of that. And you can lock, unlock the car, stop the climate, start charging, stop charging. And it all works very well. I don't know why it's not refreshing right now, but usually it does. And you can see your trip data in here. So I can go here on, on this day and see how much I did. But And then see, why is it still doing this? Now it's updated. Woohoo! It sees that its climate is on. We had 46%, not plugged in, 125 kilometers of range. Let's go back to our trips. My trip, when I go on the first day, I have those trips. Here I drove for 22 minutes, 24 kilometers, average speed and top speed. My trips, Friday, it's the 20th. Ah, that is, they, they do Sunday in the beginning. So let's go in and here it is, that was my Think that was my 130 kilometers an hour range test. 121 minutes, 236 kilometers. Average speed 126, top speed 150. <laughs> Had to speed up one time. And it's really nicely done, and it looks looks good. And you can have it for the whole month. And we have charging limit in here that you can set. And you have energy consumption, daily statistics. Energy consumption 942.27 kilowatt hours. Woohoo! It's just a lot of things you can see, and also what your uh, consumption was on each thing. 2% battery care. I didn't notice that. One more thing if you're charging your car or if you, uh, your phone, or if you're using Android Auto and you put the phone in here and you have a very big phone, the cable gets a bit uh, squashed. There's not so much room. Uh, but you can put it like this. It works too. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.